Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about eigenvectors and eigenvalues, which are often a point of confusion for a lot of students who are just learning linear algebra. And that makes sense, these words are kind of scary, and the concept itself does not seem super important or intuitive or useful. In fact it is, and we'll talk about at the end of this video why eigenvalues and eigenvectors are so important uh, from a data science perspective, so that hopefully that helps to help you remember these concepts better. But first things first, we're going to talk about what is the definition of an eigenvector and an eigenvalue. It's pretty simple. If you have any square matrix A, so A can be 2 by 2, 3 by 3, any square matrix, an eigenvector is any vector x which is not equal to 0, such that multiplying matrix A by vector x gives back some multiple of vector x, where that multiplier is lambda, which can be any real number. So for example, lambda could be 2 or negative 1 in which case you would have a times x gives back negative 1 times x, or 2 times x. And that's all an eigenvector and an eigen, its corresponding eigenvalue is. So that's one important point to note is that an eigenvector has a corresponding eigenvalue. So in this case, the eigenvector is x, the eigenvalue is lambda. Okay, let's jump right into an example, a real example of how to derive eigenvectors and eigenvalues by hand. Of course, you'll use a computer program in real life, but it's important to have the theory down, okay? Here's our square matrix A, 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3, and our challenge is going to be, let's figure out what are the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. Okay, let's start with the definition, because that, that's all we really have right now. So we know that if we find an eigenvector x, it's going to need to satisfy that equation from the definition. Now let's uh, rewrite the right-hand side a little bit and put the identity matrix right here. So remember that the identity matrix in two dimensions is just given by 1, 0, 0, 1. And it's an analog to multiplying any part of an equation by 1. It doesn't change anything. It's just going to help us to go to our next step a little bit easier. So this equation still holds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract lambda identity x from the right-hand side and the left-hand side. So we get ax minus lambda identity matrix x is equal to 0. We like in math when we have things equal to 0 because they help us a lot. We see we have an x here and an x here. Let's factor the x out. So we get a minus lambda identity matrix times x is equal to 0. Now let's pause for a second to think about what this equation means. Remember one key fact, that x is not equal to the 0 vector. Okay, We assume that right here. So that means that this new matrix we've devised, m, let's say, where m is equal to a minus lambda i, has some vector x which is not equal to 0 in its null space or its kernel. Um, another way of saying that is that there is some uh, vector x that I can do m times x and get 0 back, which means that this, ma uh, this matrix m is not invertible. We'll make a video on invertibility of matrices, but the main point you need to recall right now is that if there's some non-zero vector x in the null space of matrix M, that means matrix M is not invertible. What else do we know if we know the matrix is not invertible? Well, we know something important about its determinant, right? Let me create some space right here. So let me erase the definition here. If we know matrix M is not invertible, we know its determinant has to be equal to zero because the converse is true. We know that if a matrix is invertible, its determinant is not equal to zero, okay? So we know for a fact that the determinant, which we write as DET, determinant of A minus lambda I has to be equal to zero because of the non-invertibility of that matrix as we saw down here. All right, cool. So what do we do with this? Let's uh, go ahead and write this in its full form. So this is zero, this is zero, one, minus two, minus three. We subtract uh, lambda times i, which is just, it looks like this. And we get negative lambda, we get 1, we get minus 2, and we get minus 3 minus lambda as that entry. And we want to know what's the determinant of that matrix. Okay, 2 by 2 determinants are something we can handle. Remember, it's just uh, this element times this element. So let's do that first. If we do that, we get 3 lambda plus lambda squared, minus this element 
times this element. So minus negative 2 gives us positive 2. So that is the determinant. This polynomial in terms of lambda is the determinant of um, a minus lambda i. Now we want to make sure the determinant is equal to 0. This is just a nice polynomial uh, equation, a quadratic equation. So we don't even have to use the quadratic formula in this case. Why? Because we know we can just factor it. So we can do lambda plus 2 and lambda plus 1. Does that check out? Lambda squared, 2 lambda, that gives us 3 lambda. Yeah, that checks out. And we know that the roots of this polynomial equation are lambda is equal to minus 2 and lambda is equal to minus 1. Awesome. So we solved for the two eigenvalues. So remember, lambdas are the eigenvalues. They are negative 2 and negative 1. Now the only question is, how do I find the corresponding eigenvectors? Let's do it for one of them. Let's pick lambda equals negative 1. So let's get rid of everything on here except the matrix that we care about. So we know now that negative 1 is an eigenvalue of this matrix. How does that help us find the eigenvector? Well, we write again the definition. So we know that a, which is 0, 1, negative 2, negative 3, uh, times some vector, x1, x2, we don't know that yet, is equal to lambda times that same vector. In this case, we're using lambda as negative 1. So if we do negative 1, we get minus x1 and minus x2. Now this is pretty trivial. It's just solving a system of equations. And since there's a 0 in here, it'll be even easier. So our system of equations becomes the first equation is just x2 is equal to minus x1. So the minus x1 comes from here. And the second equation is negative 2 x1 minus 3 x2 is equal to minus x2. Let's plug the first equation into the second one. So we have x2 is equal to negative x1. Let's, well, you know what? Let's first move this minus 3x2 onto that side so that we get negative 2x1 is equal to 2x2. And then we divide by negative 2 on both sides and we get uh, positive here. We get x1 is equal to negative x2. In fact, we didn't even need to plug in the first equation into the second one because they say the exact same thing is that you can use any vector in here, any eigenvector, such that x1 is equal to negative x2. For example, 1, negative 1 will work, or negative 2, 2 will work. So there's a whole family of eigenvectors that go along with this one eigenvalue. And we can do the same thing for the other eigenvalue, which was negative 2. Instead, we would put a negative 2 right here, and then we would solve the system of equations, and we would get the family of eigenvectors that solve that. Okay, so that's kind of how we do it. Uh, we set the characteristic polynomial equal to 0 for the a minus lambda i equation uh, determinant. We find the eigenvalues, and for each eigenvalue, we plug it back in, and we figure out what is the family of eigenvectors that is corresponding to that one. So that's how we find eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now, as promised, and I think the most important part of this video, we'll be asking the big question of... Who cares? We have this cool math concept called the eigenvalue and the eigenvector, but why is it important? Why do we care about it in any real world situation? So let's use a graph for a second because I think visuals help myself and a lot of people learn. So let's look at two dimensions because it's easier. And let's set up a real situation. Let's say we are a biologist studying fish. So I'm going to draw my best as fish, okay, so we are biologists studying fish, and we only care about two attributes of the fish. We care about the fish's length, and we care about the fish's weight, okay? So length and weight, we measure them on this uh, axis right here. Now, uh, that means since we only have two dimensions, we can represent this fish as a vector. For example, here is a fish with length little l, with weight little w. So here's one possible fish. Here's another possible fish, for example. So we have all these different possible fish represented by vectors. Now, let's say we have a matrix A. Remember, at its core, a matrix is just a linear transformation. So if we take this matrix A and apply it to any vector in this length weight plane, it's going to map it to a new vector in the length width plane. We're going to assume A is our square matrix, right? So that means that if we take this fish right here, and we uh, hit matrix A against that fish, we're going to get some new fish. We're going to get, for example, maybe that vector. 
And let's just say this linear transformation A represents, uh, given a fish, A maps it to the length and weight of the best friend of that fish or whatever. Okay, so this fish has its best friend as this fish and so on. So why is it important? Why, where do eigenvalues and eigenvectors come into play? Well, if we have an eigenvector in this context, we know that a times x is equal to some scalar multiple of x. That means if we have that eigenvector x and we apply this best friend transformation um, right here, we're going to get back some scalar multiple, lambda x. It could be shorter, it could be longer, but the point is it's a scalar multiple, so it goes in the same direction as the original fish, which is a big deal because the same direction means that it has the same ratio of length to weight, for example. That can't be said for any other vector in this plane. If I have this vector, the ratio of length and weight are completely different. If I have this vector, they're again completely different. So the power of eigenvalues and eigenvectors in a data science context is that if you know something is an eigenvector um, for a given matrix, for a given linear transformation, you know that that linear transformation will map that eigenvector onto a different vector which maintains the same ratios, which maintains the same uh, basically ratios of length to weight or any other dimension you're using, which is a big deal in data science because we care a lot about how one quantity relates to another. So hopefully that helps a little bit to motivate why eigenvalues and eigenvectors are important. It's going to become even more clear when we talk about principal component analysis and we'll be seeing eigenvectors and eigenvalues come up again then. So um, until then, I hope this helped understand eigenvalues and eigenvectors a little bit better than you did before. Um, and until next time.